Y'all, why is it that every time that I go on vacation, something goes wrong? I don't know if it was the last trickling bit of Mercury retrograde because I went a few days after she ended and that bee is out to get me, but y'all, oh my goodness, did I have a trip. My name is Birdie and I'm your friendly neighborhood forest witch and I just got back from Des Moines, Iowa. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, what a trip it was. So, the trip was for actually my Mimi and Papa to visit my Canadian family for one last time. We're not sure you know, how much time Mimi and Popo have left. So I really wanted to give them this trip so they would be able to see their family from Canada. So we all packed up in a rental van and we drove out to Des Moines, Iowa to meet halfway for my Canadian family. So that all went fine. We got the rental van. Uh, Mimi and Papa were dropped off that morning and we headed out. The ride was smooth, like everything went, you know, everything went good. Where the, where the problem started was when we got to the Airbnb. So we had assumed that, and right there, we assumed. <laughs> we had assumed that the Airbnb had a bed and a bath on the first floor for Mimi and Papa, which it did, so that was good because Mimi can't do stairs. But then we also thought that it had a second floor with another queen size bed. Well, there's no second floor. Actually, the Airbnb is super tiny. The only thing on the, the first floor was a bedroom, a small living room, and an even smaller kitchen, and then that bathroom. And then in order to get to the basement, which is where the other three beds were, it was two double beds down there and a queen, and it was unfinished. It was an unfinished basement. The only way to get down there was through the bathroom, so that wasn't ideal either. <sighs> Oh my goodness. So, okay, whatever. We're sleeping in an unfinished basement. Okay, fine. The first night was fine. We all we all slept fine. Well, my particular mattress like it wasn't even on a bed frame. It was on this makeshift frame that they had built with essentially ply board as the sides and then just two by fours as slats with this really thin mattress. So unfortunately I didn't sleep well, but Mimi and Papa did. So that's all that matters. But that second night, it's about 1130 at night. And all of a sudden I hear my oldest <laughs> screaming, saying, Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm like, what? What is it? Like, cause I'm already sleeping at that point. He's like, there's a bat mom, there's a bat. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And then all of a sudden I see it flying. <laughs> I see it flying in red. And y'all, this thing was huge. I have never seen a bat this big. It had to have been, I don't know, with the wingspan, maybe even bigger, but the body, I don't know, maybe half of Sylvie, my small white, my small white dog. It was definitely bigger than my bird Violet, for sure. Like it was, it was big and it was flying around and uh, Mr. Old Crow got out of bed and <laughs> he's standing up. Well, he's like crouching down and it's a flying over. <laughs> flying over and all of a sudden, you know, cause me and you Papa are slow. I can hear him. <laughs> trying to make it as fast as they can to the basement door to find out what the heck is going on. <laughs> and then Mimi's like, what's, what's going on? And I said, there's a bat. <laughs> and this is what my papa does.
does. <laughs> he goes in the broom closet <laughs> and he throws down the dustpan. <laughs> He throws down the dustpan so Mr. Old Crow can bat at the thing. But the thing, <laughs> the thing is, me and Mr. Old Crow don't like killing anything, whether it be, you know, mice, rats, bats, or even bugs. So we didn't want to hit it for fear of actually killing it instead of just knocking it out where my grandfather's old school and if it's in his house he's gonna kill it <laughs> so but we didn't even get a chance to do anything with the dustpan anyway because it ended up going in the rafters and that was actually the last we had seen it however for the next three nights, I was absolutely terrified. You could hear it squeaking, but it never came back out. And listen to this, y'all. So that night, Mr. Old Crow had texted the host of the Airbnb and told her, you know, that there's a bat and we weren't able to get it out. So the next day, she comes and brings a fishing net for us to catch it. For us to catch it, y'all, instead of calling pest control where they can actually, you know, what's the word? Um, ve not veer it out, but like, I can't think of the word right now. But they can actually get it out of there with food or whatever, cage it, and then release it somewhere safe. She doesn't do that. No, she brings us a fishing net for us to do it ourselves. I was like... <laughs> Oh my gosh like if it wasn't bad enough that the airbnb wasn't what we expected it to be and then now this oh my goodness so yeah i was terrified i couldn't sleep the next three nights well by the the final night that we were there i was so exhausted that i didn't even care anymore like i heard it squeak and everything and i was just like no i need I need to go to sleep, so I just ended up sleeping. So yeah, we were Airbnb with a bat the entire time. <laughs> the entire time we stayed. Oh my goodness! But that wasn't even all of what had happened. So um, there was two steps to get in the house. So Mimi did have to do those two steps. And she normally uses a walker and had brought a wheelchair with her this time because she she can't walk very far. She's actually had like four or five back and neck surgeries within this past year. And so she has mobility issues. So the, when was that? That was the second morning. I was trying to help her down the stairs and I was over on this side holding her hand and she started falling this way and I couldn't because the, the van was right here so I couldn't maneuver around to catch her in time so she fell but I was holding her hand so she pulled me down with her so we both fell and I was laying on top of her and she was down, <laughs> down on the ground like this yo it's not funny but it's a little funny because of the way that we landed and I couldn't get up like I was stuck so Mr. Old Crow had to pull us both up it was a whole ordeal so we both fell oh my goodness and then we oh Mr. Old Crow is a foodie and I've probably mentioned this in past travel vlogs he likes to scope out independent restaurants wherever we go like his rule is if it's somewhere that we can go back home, like a chain restaurant or fast food, we do not go there on vacation because he wants to try new places, which is really neat because we get to try all this new food. So that was one of the best experiences was getting to try all this new stuff and it was really yummy. I'll, he's pro, He has a food blog, so he probably has a list of everywhere that we ate. So I'll put the list down in the description. If you're ever in Des Moines and wanna try these places out, check out that list because the options were really yummy.
So, okay. My Canadian family didn't arrive, let's see, we didn't arrive until late on Friday. So we actually didn't get to see them until Saturday. So on Friday, I got to do what I wanted to do, which was shop, of course. So I looked up different thrift stores and antique stores. And actually right down the street from our Airbnb, was a thrift store called, I think it was Dave's Thrift Store. So we went in there and I got some stuff. So stay tuned at the end of the video, I'll do a small haul of some of the items that I got. I really like that thrift store. And then after that, we found an antique mall called Brass Armadillo. And oh my goodness, this place was huge. So we got to go all over the different types of vendors and I found some really cool things. So I'll be showing you those as well. So that kind of took up the majority of our day there because we did have to take breaks in between. Mimi and Papa had to take naps, of course, to rest. So we did all that. And then Saturday, we finally got to meet up with my Canadian family. Now, all together, there was 21 of us. but split between, I think it was five different families. So we stayed in two separate Airbnbs and one family stayed in a hotel. And the original plan was for us all to go to their Airbnb because it was huge. Like the house I think had seven bedrooms or something like that and a hot tub. So that was our original plan. However, come to find out their Airbnb host didn't allow guests inside the house so that was unfortunate and we also found out that they didn't have a bathroom on the main floor anyway for Mimi to use while she was there so that wouldn't have worked anyway so we were trying to figure this out because there was no way 21 people were gonna fit in my small Airbnb but we ended up sitting in the backyard of my Airbnb because it did have a table and chairs and a fire pit and a, um, a play place and things like that. We sat out there, but the Canadians, I guess it's cause they're used to colder weather than us, ended up getting really hot and they couldn't handle it. So we decided to rent the convention room at my cousin's hotel. And then we went there, we played games, talked, ordered pizza, and it was a really good time. We were actually there for several hours. And then the next day, we, my, my one cousin and her husband and Mimi and Papa and my family went to the beautiful botanical gardens. Oh my goodness, it's this gorgeous glass dome. It reminded me of the movie Biodome, and <laughs> oh my goodness, I absolutely love that movie with Polly Shore. If you haven't seen it and you love comedy, definitely watch it. I love that movie. But anyway, got sidetracked. It's this beautiful glass dome, and inside they have all these tropical plants. There was even some pineapples growing in there. It was super cool, loved it. There was different areas that you could walk through um, to interact with things. Um, there was a whole different section for like gardener plants. So more of uh, the house plant variety. There was a waterfall in there. Yeah. 
And that was just inside. They also had an even bigger outside area that you could walk through with an Asian garden, which unfortunately we didn't have time to get to because it was lunchtime and Mimi and Papa needed a break. So if we ever go back or stop through Des Moines, Iowa any other time, Mr. Oak Crow and I definitely want to stop at the Asian gardens. But they had another waterfall outside that you could actually walk under and <laughs> I don't think I got any footage of this, but Mr. Old Crow actually pushed Mimi through under the, <laughs> underneath. And the thing about Mimi is she is so particular about her hair. Like she, you know, she's constantly making sure it's okay and things like that. So the whole time underneath us, she's like, no, no, don't take me. But <laughs> Mr. Old Crow took her under anyway. Like she was holding her hair and she's like, in trouble for senior abuse or something no I'm just kidding but she she was fine it was it was an experience but it was absolutely beautiful like I don't know like I would love and I've never done this before but I would love to go under a natural forest waterfall like just to experience that, I think it would be absolutely beautiful. This one was man-made and it was still beautiful. But yeah, to actually experience that in nature, oh my goodness, that's definitely on my bucket list. But anyways, they had fountains outside, different types of plants. When you first go into the botanical garden, like on the outside, they had this little uh, floral garden with trails that you could walk through and there were bees everywhere just absolutely loving this and the types of like the types and varieties of these flowers were so unique like some of these flowers I had never even seen before so it was really cool to actually see them up close and I took tons of pictures oh my goodness but yeah after we did that we went out to eat at this New Orleans themed restaurant and it was so good. It reminded me of my trip to New Orleans during Halloween a few years ago and oh my goodness, I miss New Orleans so bad. Me and my husband all the time are saying, man, we gotta go back. And if there was one place that I could buy a second home in, it would definitely be New Orleans because it's just absolutely beautiful. But you know I had to get shrimp and grits and it was delicious. Like it, it tasted like shrimp and grits from New Orleans when we had it there. So super good. I think it was called Tupelo Honey or Honey Tupelo. Very good. So if you ever go to Des Moines, definitely check them out. Now there was a long waiting line. So if you do go, I do suggest calling for reservations beforehand 
because it was pretty busy, especially for a large party like ours. But then after that, we met back up with everybody. And this time we actually went to their Airbnb, but in the backyard since we weren't allowed inside. And we just hung out. My cousin's husband actually made spaghetti from scratch. Like he made the spaghetti sauce and used wine. Like it was a French uh, spaghetti recipe cause he's French and it tasted so good. Like absolutely loved that. And then afterwards we all went to ice cream and it was just a great time. So in reality, I guess we only got to spend maybe a day and a half with the Canadians, but the time that we did spend was really nice and we got to talk and just spend time together and Mimi and Papa were really appreciative of that. So I'm really glad that I was able to do that for them. But that is pretty much my entire trip. After that, we got up the next day and left really early and, you know, did the drive home and, you know, everything went smoothly on the drive home, but it was just those little, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call them little, but it was just those odd things within the trip that made it exhausting. And I told Mr. O'Crow, I am more exhausted after this vacation than I was before. I just, I'm at the point where y'all, I need a break and I don't know when I'm gonna get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was joking with Mr. Old Crow and be like, well, I guess there's always you'll break. Maybe I'll get a break then, but I don't know. But yeah, it was definitely exhausting and I'm glad it's over. <laughs> Even though I'm glad I did it for Mimi and Papa and I got to see my Canadian family and y'all, I don't know what is wrong with me, but I am planning a trip to Canada for the first time in two years during winter in February for their Maple Festival. So stay tuned for that one <laughs> and fingers crossed that nothing goes wrong during that trip. But anyways, that's my trip. So now let's get into the haul. So the first item that I actually showed when I was at the antique store, I actually purchased and it's this beautiful ceramic witch and you can actually stick a candle in there. Oh my goodness, she even has red hair. Absolutely love her and you know I'm keeping this out year round. I don't care if it has a pumpkin. I absolutely love her. Then the next item I got at the antique store is this little candelabra. And I like it because it's for my smaller candles. So if I wanna do a, you know, candle magic with a trio, then I can use my smaller candles, especially if I don't have time to do a full-fledged spell with my bigger candles. This is gonna be really nice. And I just noticed this is made in Italy. So absolutely beautiful, love this. And then I also, I love the little golden books. So anytime that I see one, I pick it up. And this time I picked up Hansel and Gretel. And I just thought the pictures were so beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, pick that one up for my collection. And then I'm not sure if I've ever shared this on my channel or not, but I collect the trolls from the 80s. So they had this little vampire one and I just had to have it. Like Mr. Old Crow did not want me to buy this. He said that I didn't need it, but y'all, I definitely needed it. Look how cute, how stinking cute this is. I. I had to get it. So when he walked away, I just put it in my cart and shh, didn't. <laughs> but it's so stinking cute. I think I might have over a dozen now. Like the ones that I have, I have a few witches and like 
old grandpa ones. Like I have an old grandpa one that has a fishing rod and that one reminds me of my grandfather. So I have a few different ones. I think I even have a graduation one I had purchased during my college graduation. But yeah, I just absolutely love these little trolls. So anytime I see one, I gotta pick it up. Then at the thrift store, I found this really cool book light and I don't really like the painting, but I thought with maybe some paint thinner, I could get that paint off and then repaint it. And it needs a new battery, but it has the little switch there. So I thought that would be a, a fun, you know, a fun craft project that I could do and just to make it my own. I also found some pillowcases for fall. And the cashier really gave me a great deal on this stuff. Like, even though it was already priced really cheap, he, <laughs> he gave it to me for even cheaper. So it's just these plain orange pillowcases, but I thought they would be really pretty for, for fall. And it's a pack of two. And those were only $1.98. Like, holy cow, how much was this thing? $1.45. Like, things were priced really good at Dave's Thrift Store. And then, you know, every time that I go to a thrift store, antique store, I got to pick up some books. So, I found this one called P.S. You're Not Listening by Eleanor Craig. And it sounded really good. It says, no school would take these children. Some were violent, others were withdrawn, all were deeply disturbed. So you know it's gonna be a good one. Absolutely, cannot wait to read that one. And then I also picked up one called Naked, and this is by David Sidaris. And I believe this might be a memoir, if I'm not mistaken says, welcome to the hilarious, strange, elegiac, what? Ele elegiac? I don't even know how to pronounce that word. Outrageous world of David Sidaris. And naked, Sidaris turns the current mania for the memoir on its proverbial ear, mining the exceedingly rich terrain of his life, his family, and his unique worldview. So, yeah, it's a memoir. Cannot wait. And what is this word? Elegiac? Elegiac? Why can't I pronounce words, y'all? I have no idea. But yeah, I one of my favorite genres is memoirs. So yeah, cannot wait to read that. And then we also had to stop at Aldi's to get some groceries. So I had picked some stuff up there in their non-food aisle. Absolutely love that aisle, y'all. But the first one is this really cute novelty glass bud vase. And it's this olive green. Let me take it out of the box because the glare is just glaring right now, y'all. But I just thought this was so pretty. And you can put flowers in there or, you know, I don't know, sticks or incense or um, those, those reeds. Like if you want to put essential oils at the bottom and you put the little reeds up. So I got the mushroom, but then I also, for fall, got the acorn as well. I just thought these were so pretty, and I love that it's not plastic. These are actually glass, and I believe these were only like five bucks, so that is a great deal. I also picked up a fall candle. You know I did. This one is cedar oak wood, and it's like a brown color, but... It smells so good, y'all. Like, one of my favorite scents is tobacco. And I'm not sure if this has tobacco in it, but it definitely gives off those vibes. Yeah, it doesn't say. Like a woodsy tobacco vibe. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Love this one. And then also, we had to stop at Dollar Tree. So, you know, I had to pick something up. But, y'all... I only got one thing. Aren't you surprised? I definitely am because every time I go in that store, I got I got to get a whole cart full. But I only found one thing this time, y'all. I'm doing good. So it's this cute little acorn dangly, 
And of course the sun's coming out now, so the, the glare is terrible. I apologize, y'all. But you get this olive green acorn, this orange one, and then this leaf that says thankful. And this was uh, $1.25. It wasn't part of their, um, you know, $5, $10 line. So absolutely love that. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it all together or, you know, cut it apart and put them different places. But I just thought that was so stinking cute. But anyways, that's my entire haul for my trip. I know I, I behaved myself, y'all. I didn't go overboard. And partially that was due to Mr. Old Crow repeatedly saying, Shayna, we don't have enough room in the van. <laughs> and y'all, if you're wondering who Shayna is, it's me. I go by Birdie. That's my nickname. That's been my nickname since I was two years old. But yeah. My real name is Shayna. Surprise! <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that was my trip to Iowa and my little haul. I hope you all enjoyed this video and maybe got a little bit of a laugh from it because I just, at this point, I gotta laugh, y'all. I have got to laugh about these vacations because what else is there to do? But anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, friends. Bye.